Hi, my name is Nick Fredericks and I'm the CEO of Flypaper Technologies and I'm here today to talk to you about our product Sherlock and more specifically its feature Distill, which is its automated clash grouping algorithm. With Distill, you set up all of your clash tests the same way that you normally would. In this model, I have a single trade versus single trade tests that I've set up inside of here. Um, but you could set them up as uh, multi-trade versus multi-trade if you wanted to do coordination that way as well. Once you set up your clash tests, you click on Distill. And for each one of your clash tests, they're available inside of Distill. And for each one of those, you tell Distill two different settings. You have a model most likely to move setting. So that tells the grouping algorithm a little bit about your hierarchy as a coordinator. In this case, this is a sheet metal versus plumbing test. Uh, I'm going to choose plumbing as most likely to move in that test. And then the second main setting that you choose is this focus global slider. Uh, that uh, adjusts just the proximity portion of the algorithm, so how close clashes are to each other and whether or not they should be grouped together. Uh, we typically find that coordinators will either uh, start on the global side and then move their way toward the focus side as they get uh, down to closer to sign off on a floor, or uh, subcoordinators will just find a location that they like that works well for that test in that model and leave it there throughout the uh, duration of coordination. So this is the beginning of this coordination, so I'm going to put this on the global side. And I'm just going to distill this one test. There's 249 individual clashes in here, and I'm going to distill the selected tests. So it's turned it into 61 groups. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. So if I go to my sheet metal versus plumbing test, go to the results panel, and I'll turn on dim other here. So you can see that this list here within the Clash Detective has been sorted by the number of clashes within each group. So it's going to bring the largest clashes up to the top uh, every single time that you run distill. So this group 53 has about 20 or 25 so or so clashes in it. Uh, and you, if we take a look at it, inside of Navisworks, we can see that it's pulled in all of the insulation hits, the hanger hits, and all the other various uh, clashes that make up this one issue to be solved. So that's what Distill, uh, the algorithm that's in Distill, is trying to do. It's trying to create a group to represent a single thing to be fixed. That is the biggest differentiator between what Distill does and any other clash grouper that's on the market. Uh, it's not going to group by area or by proximity only or by grid line or by room. It is trying to create a group to represent a thing that can be resolved in a model. Um, and there's a few reasons why we do that. One is so that these clash numbers that you have inside of the clash detective can actually start meaning something to you. We all know that individual clash counts don't mean anything. If you clear 2,000 clashes in one model update, that doesn't tell me how much work you actually did. Um, but if you are consistently grouping your model in a way where the, your groups represent things to be resolved in the model, uh, now as you are uh, resolving those entire groups, uh, we can get a very good idea of how fast you're getting through coordination and how much further you have to go. The other thing, uh, well, just one thing to mention too about this group is that when we chose plumbing as most likely to move, what that actually did was when the algorithm started finding clashes with this run of plumbing, it actually tried to take a look down this run of plumbing regardless of whether or not they were separate model items or not and include as many things as it could find with that run of plum plumbing into this group. Uh, so this is everything that it could find with this run of plumbing and inside of this group 53. And another thing to note is that um, when you get model updates, and maybe this pipe moves around a little bit, uh, maybe it even uh, is has, creates a couple new clashes that are in this area. What Distill will do is, um, before it makes new groups with those new clashes that showed up, it will take a look at all of your existing groups and it will make a determination of whether or not it should insert any of those new clashes into any of your existing groups. 
And it does this so that it doesn't just create a bunch of tiny little clash groups all over the place as you go through coordination. So it kind of does the management of the clash groups for you. You do have some control over that uh, functionality. And that's where these existing group settings come in. So the first existing group setting is what which statuses of groups should distill be allowed to insert clashes into. So by default, distill is allowed to insert clashes into new, active, or reviewed clash groups. And so by default, it's not going to ever insert a clash into an approved or resolved group. Uh, but you can change that functionality if you want to. Uh, and then the other main existing group settings uh, setting you have is regroup. So you can see that it is all off by default. And that's because distill will by default not explode or regroup any existing groups. So uh, you typically would run coordination with all of that off so that it doesn't um, change your existing clash groups because you might have assigned them to somebody, you might have changed the name, you might have commented on it, uh, things like that, and you don't want to lose all that work. So that's the reason why regroup is typically off. One of the main uh, times that you might use regroup is if you're just playing around with the settings though. So if you wanted to see what the slider does to a model while you're just testing out distill, you could turn on regroup and you know change the setting, run distill again, and then those new settings would be applied to your groups. If you don't have regroup on, nothing will change with your existing groups because distill by default will not touch any of your existing groups. One other thing with distill is that uh, you do have the ability to adjust the naming template of how it names clashes. So by default, it's going to name the clashes group and then a number, and that number will never be reused within a test. So if you uh, deleted all these clash groups and then reran to still in the same clash test again, uh, it would start at um, 62 because it's already used the numbers one through 61. Uh, you can also include the selections involved in the clash, the test name, the year, month, and day of when the uh, clash group was created, the grid intersection, and the item one and item two names directly into your clash group names. And the last thing you can include into your distillant group name template is this area tag. So that is actually a feature of Sherlock as well. So I will add it to our distill group name template. It's gonna be the first thing in the name. And once I save that, now I can set up any type of areas of interest I want in my model by clicking on the area tool. So what that does is put me into a plan view and allow me to draw in any area of interest. So I know that in this model in particular, there is a mechanical room in this model. And if I draw a bounding box around that mechanical room, I can call this mechanical room. And I do have the ability to adjust where this area applies vertically. And that is based on your active grid system and what levels are inside of your active grid system. So by default, it's going to apply to the entire model. But if you wanted it to only apply to a certain floor, if you're working in a multi-floor model, uh, you can do that here. And I'll just save that. You can see now I've got one called mechanical room. And, you know, maybe I also just want to know about, I want to tag all the clashes in this corridor here. So I'm just going to draw in... Uh, another area, and I'm going to call it corridor. So if I save that, now I've got two areas drawn in, uh, and if I go and I navigate into 3D, I can kind of see where they apply in 3D as well. And then if I exit the area tool, now whenever I use distill in the future, um, so let's just distill this uh, sheet metal versus mechanical pipe. Do you want to choose mechanical pipe is more likely to move in this? And I'll rerun to still. This gave us 74 groups. If I take a look at sheet metal versus mechanical pipe, you can now see that some of the clash groups now have those area names in them. So if the clash group fell within one of those area bounds, they are now named that um, 
with that uh, area's name. And if you sort by name, this is kind of the reason why I put the area as the beginning part. Um, now I can use the clash detected to sort by name to kind of just see, you know, all the clashes that are in the mechanical room right next to each other. And let's see if we can find, so there was a few also clash groups that were within the corridor. That takes me through the demo of Distill. Thanks for watching and have a great day.